Hello, I have to tell you, I have a treat for you today. Today, I'm going to do what looks like an IELTS speaking test, the first part, part one. It's like a mock. I'm going to do a mock speaking test for part one because I want to experience exactly what you're going through when you take the IELTS speaking test. Hi, I'm Jerry with Global Connection ESL. In this video, you will see me answering real questions that an IELTS examiner would probably ask you in part one of the IELTS speaking test. In fact, I even feel a little nervous right now as I think about going in to have an IELTS speaking test. That's probably the same feelings that you have sometimes. So let's go ahead and jump in and watch me answer some questions that might be asked at the IELTS speaking test part one. You'll also have a chance to learn a little bit more about me because I'm sharing true stories from my life in this interview. Okay, let's get started. Yes, my name is Jerry Archer and here is my ID. My hometown is a small community in North Carolina. Uh, I grew up there and there are only about 6,000 people who lived in this community. So it's a small farming community uh, in the middle of North Carolina. My hometown is in an area of the state that's called the Piedmont. And I always thought that was interesting because uh, this word means foot of the mountains. So we have mountains uh, to the west of us and uh, if we were to drive to the east, we would get to the ocean. Um, it's a coastal state. Also, when I was growing up, there were no stoplights in our community, only stop signs. So if anyone was driving a car, they didn't need to worry about stoplights. And because the traffic was uh, not much, there was not much problem with waiting at the stop signs either. People do different kinds of jobs in my hometown. Because it's a farming community, there are many farmers who grow many different crops. Things like wheat, soybeans, tobacco, corn. Also, there are teachers who live in the community and teach in the local schools. There are a couple larger cities that are 20 to 30 minutes drive away. And so some people will go into the city to work regular business jobs at a bank or uh, some other company. So those are the types of jobs that people in my community do. Yes, I think it is a good place to live. Because there are four seasons, uh, you can enjoy different seasons of the year. The air is fresh. Uh, it's green outside because of the rain. So it's beautiful outside. People can enjoy nature and people are kind and nice to each other. Oh, my first memory um, in my childhood is probably with my grandfather. My grandfather was a farmer and so he would drive tractors in the field and he wanted me to learn to drive the tractor in the field too. So I remember being six years old and I was sitting on the tractor, driving the tractor and my grandfather was just behind me, guiding me on the tractor. My feet could barely reach the pedals. Well, yes, there were a lot of friends at school, but I think that I can say that I had many cousins and I played with my cousins a lot more than with my friends because my mom's side of the family uh, had so many cousins, we could go outside and play together. So I had more cousins than I had friends. When I was a child, I really enjoyed playing sports in my grandmother's backyard with all my cousins. We would play different sports according to the season. So when it was baseball season, we would play baseball in the backyard. When it was basketball season, we would play basketball in the backyard. And when it was football season, that's American football, we would play American football in the backyard 
We played many fun games together in the backyard. I think there are benefits to growing up in the city and benefits to growing up in a countryside community like I did. But if I had to think about it, I think I believe it's better to grow up in the countryside because there is fresh air and understanding of nature and animals. And I think this is a really good foundation for children to grow up with. So yes, I think it's better to grow up in the countryside. So what did you think? How did I do? Could you see how nervous I was in the beginning? I didn't express myself very much, but over time I started to relax and open up more about myself. In this first part of my mock speaking test for IELTS, you can see many things that I did, and I'd love to know what you think. How did I do with my fluency and coherence, about my lexical resource, about my grammar, and pronunciation? I'm not too worried about pronunciation, but how did I do with those? Of course, I don't have a British accent. I use an American accent, but either one is fine in the IELTS speaking test. If this was helpful for you, please leave me a comment. If you have a question, let me know. Write that down below in the comments. And I hope that you will share this with your friends. Oh yes, one more thing. I have a bonus for you in this video. If you look in the show notes below, you can download a free set of uh, typical questions you might hear in part one of the IELTS speaking. I hope it helps you as you prepare. And if there's anything I can do to help, please let me know. Best to you in the IELTS success. I hope you'll stay tuned for the next two videos in this series. In the next video, I'll be speaking about that part two of IELTS speaking. And then after that, there'll be one more video where the discussion happens, part three of the speaking. I hope you look forward to it. See you soon. Thanks again.